The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 18th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past a new, at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to write radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off two points. The S&P's up four. The NASDAQ 100's up 16. The Russell's down five. Semis are up 11. Trendies are up 14. New York Stock Exchange off 20. Gold's up $2.30 with silver being down three pennies. Lights we crude up a buck eight. Trade out at 91.10. Lights we uh, natural gas is up six pennies. Trade out at 271. A 30 year treasury. 118.14 is a print that's off. Five ticks. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got micro strategy, about a 3% move or $10. Um, you've got LAM research up $9, 1.5%. Uh, Charter communications, 6.5 bucks, 1 and 4 tenths percent. Synopsis up about 1 and 4 tenths, $6.50 move there. Northwood Grumman up 6 bucks, 1 and 3 tenths. So the downside is Moderna up 8 buckaroonies, 7% move. Tesla down 760, that's nearly a 3% move. New Valent down 670, 14% move. Brilliance in stores off 6 Six bucks, nearly four percent. Super, super micro down five dollars and sixty cents is about two and a quarter percent move to the downside. But let's begin with what? Let's begin with market breadth. Where are we on market breadth? Let's go take a look at that. We'll begin by looking at what? We'll begin by looking at the S and P 500. What we see here is this is market breadth negative for its 62.40 daily and its weekly time frame. On a daily time frame, you have 123 inch trading above profile, 155 below. So at this stage here, this suggests that sellers are in control of the ES mini, the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100 and the NQ out here, we've got uh, bearish signals for the 6240 daily and the weekly is basically a break even. When I say break even, there's 25 trading above, 25 trading below. So one more is going to tip this to sellers having control. So overall, what we know is that sellers have control basically of the, well, they have a control of the S&P 500 and they're very close to getting that inside the NDX for all four of those time frames on a shorter term time frame just see what's going on we can look at a 30 minute for the es and the nq this is for the es mini the s p 500 133 above 130 below so it is slightly bullish out there if we take a look at the nasdaq 100 let's wait for its figures this will calculate uh, we'll see we're looking at the upper left hand corner 14 above 30 below so we've got negative market breadth inside the ndx 100 with the exception being the weekly where you've got break even so this is telling us right now that sellers are truly trying to take control of the uh, market now we have that same set of information information or we could have that same piece of information from the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator that is panel number three on my chart because that is really taking a look at the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line that's what you see at panel number two when the 
advanced client oscillator gets below the zero threshold level and stays below for two consecutive sessions, that tells us that market conditions have shifted and therefore for the general market, sellers would be in control. Whereas if price closes above zero today, because it closed just below, you know, Friday was the first day below zero, closes back above, tells the buyers were the ones that were always in control. So let's take a look at the spot volatility index. Well, we didn't really take a look at that. We did that during the market update. But we do take a look at the spot volatility index. What we're going to see here is so far a test and rejection of that 50 day exponential moving average. The 50 day is currently printed out at 1477. The high today in the spot fix 1475. Watch 1477. If price closes above that, that will then signal to you and I that sellers have also taken control of the S&P 500. Of course, you'd like to see two consecutive sessions above that. If price remains below that, well, then we have these choppy market conditions. So that takes care of the New York Stock Exchange. That takes care of our market breadth. That takes care of the spot volatility index. Where do we want to go next? Well, let's just stay on this set of screens out here. And if we take a look at the equity futures out here, we can see some trend lines on the ES Mini. That's the upper left-hand panel out there. So we got price trading both with inside its profile, the daily profile that is, that's a range from 44.17 up to 45.54. But you also have trend line support and resistance. So on a further move lower, we'd expect price to test and perhaps hold the area in about the 44.70 level out there. If price is able to break through these trend lines, then we'd be looking at a test of both the weekly and daily bottom of its profile level that's where the buyers are lined up that's between 4417 and 4424 we take a look at the nq yes it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile but right into a rising trend line if this trend line fails we're likely going to see a move back to 15191 if we take a look at the dow equity future contract Price trading with inside its daily profile, testing the bullish structured zone. That bullish structured zone is between 34,757 and 34,868. If price closes below that, we also have another trend line for price to uh, take a look at out there. Uh, the bottom of its weekly, well, we're already trading below the bottom of the weekly profile for the Dow. Finally, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. We can see its trend lines out there, price testing both a trend line as well as a swing point. The swing point that we're looking at takes us back into the uh, time period of June 26 out there. You're also testing a bullish structured profile level. 1862.96 is the area to watch. If price closes below that, it suggests lower price. The real lower price would be trading below its swing point out here that could set up an A to B equal CD to the downside. So the really important level to be watching inside of the Russell 2000 equity future contract is going to be that low from August 25th. And that low is 1852.60. If we were to get it closed below that, that would then trigger an A to B equal CD to the downside. We don't have that in place just yet, but if that did take place, the A to B equals CD to the downside would give you an initial price projection of 1766.40. So something for us to pay attention to and uh, to continue to monitor. What else do we want to look at out there? Well, we had a request by Hector, actually, to take a look at the IWM. And the IWM, let me switch over to this panel here. What Hector is looking at, he's trying to anticipate that maybe there's going to be an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, the reason it's anticipated that is a swing point here in the IWM uh, is on August 25th. And that did volume there of 29 million shares. And on the move lower Friday... This did volume out there of 39 million shares, but price still has to bust through the swing point. And that means the close below 181.61. We get back from this break, we'll take a look at the IWM again for Hector. And then we'll look at uh, First Solar for ELO. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the IWM. This is for Hector. He's uh, trying to understand if, in fact, it's a swing point. The IWM is. And he's talking about the swing point from a daily basis from August the 25th. That also sets up on a weekly basis the same swing point out there. So we've got two volume levels to watch and to anticipate. And what Hector's asking is, first, where are the buy the D point levels if that swing gets taken out? So I'm gonna draw that in on the weekly time frame chart. The A point out here would be the high from the week that began July 31st. The B point, the week that began August 28th. And then the C point was a uh, base, well, let's didn't take that, hold on a second here. There we go, there's our B point. The C point is the following week when it made a high up at the 191.86 level. So one to one, A to B equals CD. Should we get that confirmation, a close at least below 181.61? If it does with volume, even more of a confirmation. Your 1-1 one -one price projection level would be 174.72. Now, that retracement is about a 60% retracement. So odds would favor it does about a 1-to-1 one -one A to B equals CD out there. Now, the volume on a weekly basis, 121, 167. Last week, you were coming down into that level with a slightly more volume, 126 million shares. But again, price still needs to close below that 181.61 area. Now, that A to B equals CD gets you to 174. Turns out that on a monthly basis, we have bullish structured profile support between 170.64 and 173.82. So more likely than not, Hector, if in fact 181.61 gets closed below, that's where price would likely find some some support out there. So I hope that that answered your question. Finally, just to finish it off, simply from a short-term standpoint, we'll switch over to those white background charts out here. And that's because really we don't have much in the way of questions in the queue. Uh, easy to understand, having been away for a couple of weeks out there in Japan. But when we take a look at the, at the intraday charts here for the Russell 2000. What we'll see out here is we will see on a five-hour time frame, we'll see a nice hammer candle that confirmed the Rosemontum indicator bottom. Now, on a five-hour basis, 
out here. If price were to close below that low, 1861.40, that would suggest to you and I that we head lower. Why? Because on a five hour, it would negate its bottom pattern. The same thing for a four hour time frame chart out there. Now we can see the other intraday charts. When I say other, I'm referring to 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute. Each of them have triggered roads momentum indicator signals. But what we don't have out here are bullish reversal candles. So you'd keep an eye out on a short term basis for a bullish reversal candle. I, I, um, uh, no, I don't take that back. For for the 15, the 30, and the 60-minute time frame, if we did, we'd likely get some type of intraday rally. Otherwise, you really want to watch that low. And again, that low inside the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract is going to be down to 1854.10. We get it close below that, likely headed lower. Um, let's take a look at a request out here. This is from ELO inside the Tiger's Den. ELO wanted to take a look at first sold. Did I change screens? I did. Okay, good. Um, so here, if we take a look at first solar right now, and the, there really wasn't a question, so just bring it up. So in the case of first solar, if it can spike below the low from September 13th, and that low would be 177.10, then what you would generate or what this would generate needs to do that today or tomorrow. If it does that on first solar, you would then get a TD9 count bottom pattern. That should then take us up to resistance levels. The first resistance level would be the bottom of its profile. That's at 175.51. The second would be its oscillator and change line, right around 176.05. The price can close above those areas. Then we're looking at resistance of 179.06, 181, oh, I'm sorry, 184.37 out there. So you'll watch the first solar charts, watch its activity ELO, both today and tomorrow, if we get that spike below that, that could set up a bottom. If we don't get that, then even though you could still get a TD9 count top or a TD9 count pattern, I should say, it won't be a TD9 count bottom. We want that low to take place on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. So watch this for the next couple of days. Now, on a weekly time frame chart, price closed below the bottom of its weekly profile last week. We're trading below that now, it being 178.82. A, a, a second consecutive weekly close below 178.82, which suggests lower price. Now, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal here. On a monthly time frame, First Solar has a Rhodesman to indicator top, a TD9 count top, and price right now is testing its bearish structured monthly profile. You know the routine here, and that is if on a monthly basis we see a close below 173.83, that's the center of that profile, that odds favor price is going to make its way back to the 138.93 level. So how do we recap for solar? The first is on the short-term time frame, the daily. Watch the next couple of days. See if we get that spike below that low from um, the trading day of September 13th. If we do, then we could or should see some type of rally. The question is, how does price handle resistance levels? The weekly and the monthly chart are suggesting to you and I that First Solar, over the longer term, wants lower price. So First Solar, I hope that that helps you out with regard to uh, that. And thanks so much for being one of the first to uh, make requests. The first was Hector, and the second was yourself. And the third is going to be Ron. And Ron writes in, he says, Steve, welcome back. If you have time, boil daily chart, looking for an entry point. Thanks, Ron. So, Ron, let's go take a look at, this will take me a moment to pull up the charts. But let's go take a look, and I'll put boil up there. But first, let's go take a look at natural gas. Now, Natural gas is rolling over into the November contract. I believe what's going to pull up here is going to be October. So we'll just take a look at October. Then I'll go ahead and change it out to November out there. But as we take a look at this, natural gas that is, the first thing to notice here, or I'll just simply point out to you, you already know this, but for everybody to notice, is if you look at the weekly time frame chart out here, what do we see? We see a sideways consolidation. This sideways consolidation, we can say, has been going on since April of, uh, of this year out there. So we're dealing with a uh, five, six-month consolidation. Uh, the resistance level, really, I know you're looking for an entry point into boil. Do you really want to do an entry point into boil, which is a, I believe boil is a two or three time uh, ETF when all you have is a chop, chop, fizz, fizz. It's not a relief it is out there. I would say this is a perfect example of when you don't want to use those leverage ETFs out there. You want to use those leverage ETFs when you've got momentum either to the upside or the downside. And what we're looking at here, there is no momentum with regard to natural gas. Now, that's the weekly time frame chart. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, 
The daily time frame chart doesn't have any kind of a pattern. It negated a TD nine count bottom. That was a pattern that formed on August 24th. We closed below that on September the 6th. Right now what we have is a good old fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. So to the extent you wanna take a long position in natural gas, which Ron does, I would say you wanna do that when price gets down to the bottom of its profile. That's down at about the $2.53 mark out there. Again, this is the October contract. We will switch out to November here momentarily, but just take a look at this. Is there anything else that I see? Five hour chart shows a TD9 count bottom. So when we switch over to November, we want to see if that same pattern is there. This suggests that we could see a rise up to about $2.79. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. Okay, let's switch from October. Oh, I've got to do this for each of them. Uh, son of a gun. Oh, well, it is what it is. Natural gas, so you'll just have to uh, put up with uh, getting these charts here updated. I don't have them all uh, connected to each other. G1123. I didn't like that. Natural gas, November 23. There we go. Uh, let's do the same thing here for the daily time frame. Sorry about that, folks. It is what it is. Now, natural gas, we want to take a look at the uh, the 30-minute time frame chart out there. Right? Did that have a, a TD point count pattern? Well, it turns out the break is going to save you from listening to me babble. But we get back to this Take a look at the natural gas contract for November. See what kind of signal information it has as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're looking at the November contract for natural gas out here. This is for Ron inside the Tiger's Den. Who wants to take a look at entering a long trade inside of uh, Boyle. I looked at the UNG holdings, and 90% uh, of the UNG right now is in the November contract. I imagine the others, uh, the uh, what the other 10% will roll out of this uh, uh, in the next day or so. If we take a look at natural gas for its November time frame, Ron, here's the interesting pattern that we're taking a look at. Number one, um, no, no no, bottom pattern that is present at the moment. There is an A to B equal CD. I don't believe that uh, it has attained the one-to-one -one price level, but let's just make sure out there. I'm just gonna move the A to B line over here to the uh, C point as soon as I can grab it. There we go. And uh, so we'll see that now a uh, price has not gotten down as far low as it needs to to complete that A to B equal CD to the downside. We could also see that that oscillator and change on has really acted as significant resistance out here. And today, what you saw is a test and rejection of that uh, level. That level, by the way, that oscillator and change line, $2.98. If price could close above that, then we're looking at a run to the top of its profile. And that's at 307. Is that a reason to get into the trade or where would you get into the trade here? Well, again, different than the October contract, but I would have to say at the bottom of that bullish structure profile on $2.93 out there. Would I enter it now knowing that resistance is held on the daily time frame? Probably not. If we take a look at the um, two-hour chart, two-hour chart has a TD9 count bottom. That took place on uh, Thursday, uh, 9.17. No, that would have been uh, overnight out there. So uh, we've got a nice TD9 count bottom out here, but what price did was it ran right into resistance. Let me expand out the chart. And the resistance run is a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So $2.99 out there. Uh, price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Uh, not daily profile, it's a, it's a two hour profile out here. No, there's a new profile form, I take that back. Uh, price is trading above the top of that new profile at $2.94 out there. But a close above $2.99 would suggest a further rally out there. So what else can I really share with you with regard to natural gas out here? Well, I'll go back to Boyle, uh, which is really what you had called and asked about, so, or not called, but you wrote in. Let me close out these natural gas charts out here. Let's get back up to our three time frames where we can take a look at Boyle, B-O-I-L, which is one of the ETFs for natural gas. And so here in looking at its profiles and trying to tie this into the natural gas contract, you'd have to say that 54.53 would be the area where you could take a look at a long position. If you take a look at that weekly time frame chart, though, that's scary with a lot of sideways movement out there. Yes, we could see Boyle's run from 54 to 78, but overall, it's basically been a sideways move. So, Ron, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. If not, right back, and I'll be happy to uh, get some additional info for you. Let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from Duke. And uh, Duke says, welcome back, Steve. Hope you and your wife enjoyed your trip. Uh, absolutely fabulous trip out there we'll talk more about it as we you know, after we get into the, to all the requests out here so let's take a look at platinum what is he which is what he is looking for he's looking at the uh, october contract out here so let's pull up platinum do you look at platinum looking to go long okay so let's uh, get this up on our charts out here it's going to take just a moment for everything to populate platinum what it did was it formed a td9 count top this is the daily time frame that td9 count top Formed out here on the trading day of August 3rd. And what did it do? It took price right back to its TD9 count breakout level at 896.50. Price on Friday closed above the top of its profile. This suggests that, and so even though there's not a bottom pattern, it can be a bottom pattern pulling back to a level of support, which is the TD9 count breakout level, holding it, and which it basically has done. And now with price above the top of its profile, what we should look at, Duke, is price making a run up towards uh, the TD9 count top again. That TD9 count top, which took place on August 30th, is up at the 993.30 level. Now, I'd hold off on entering a long position now. And the reason is because the five-hour time frame chart just completed a TD9 count top. Price should pull back to the oscillator and change line at the 923.90-ish area out there. We're trading at 938. Now, that's the five-hour chart. The four-hour chart says, hey, Stevie. I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I negated my TD9 count top, and I'm ready to run higher up to 954. So we've got our confusing messages out here as we further take a look at the signals. I don't have a uh, top 
per se. Although I see a sell, the D point pattern on the two hour chart, Roseman to indicator top on the 60, on the 30, on the 15 out here. So you want to go long uh, platinum. What I would suggest at this stage, this is going to be day number three, likely day number three of moves to the upside. Let's pull this chart over here. And let's see. You know, this can extend itself. We've seen as many as six consecutive, five consecutive moves to the upside. So I won't go with the standard, uh, hey, two bars, two to three bars up, and then a pullback out there. Um, I would, you know, I, I won't I won't use that as the likely outcome, especially with price being above the top of its daily profile. But you got to watch the five hour time frame chart out here, Duke, because of that TD nine count top. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out with regard to uh, platinum. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Next question coming from Nicholas. Nicholas writes in and he says, uh, good morning, Steve. Welcome back. Would you please go over EQT? Yeah. So let's go switch over to this set of charts out here. EQT and EQT is what I remember looking at this a while back uh, might have been Garo that was uh, Garo and Dan maybe inside the Tiger's Den take a look at EQT uh, corporation but EQT right now is trading above the top of its uh, bearish structured daily pro but it's pulling back it does have a Rosemont indicator top and the question is, what is it doing as it's testing this swing point, the swing point from August 24th that did volume out here of 4.1 million shares? On Friday, you came lower, but you didn't pass through it with 7.9 million shares. So it's pushing lower. Today, you're testing that swing point. Again, the low of that swing point is 41.38. We're at 41.36. They closed below it with volume. Right now, you've got a million shares. With volume would mean more than 4 million shares. So today, you've got light volume inside of EQT, Nicholas. Would you please go over it? Thank you, and it's great to have you back. Okay, perfect. Um, so at this stage here, let's look at the weekly chart. You've got a definite uh, seventh wave top out there. That's letter G. That's courtesy of the uh, Chapman wave. You've got price consolidating with inside its profile. Its next level of support is 4072 and below that, 3863. The monthly chart still remains bullish. Why? Because price is above the top of its profile and price is above its green oscillator and change line, which is 41.03. Price were to close below 41.03, then we're likely to head back to about 40.08. Now, 40.08 is the center of its bearish structure daily profile. If this is only a counter trend move to the downside, that's where price would find support at 4008 out there. So that's the level that, I'd be, that I would be watching for. On a 30 minute basis, you've got a Rhodes indicator bottom for EQT. Uh, it has found resistance at the top of its uh, profile at 4163. So on any rally, that's the area to be watching. If price were to close above that, then you can be looking to move to 4271. Right now, the bottom found resistance, and so it kind of neutralized that 30 minute signal out there so that's what i see when we take a look at eqt we had your question inside the tiger's den to look at carvana cvna that is dan and cvna will get that populated the question is uh, how about carvana okay let's take a look at it so let's get this up on our chart right now it looks like it's trading out at about 5113 with regard to patterns out here there is an a to b equals cd to upside what's this confirmed by volume the uh, b point would be the day of September the 1st, 10 million shares. And that was passed with 24 million shares. Dan, we get back to this break. I'll try to rip apart Carvana for you, get a feel for where it's headed to, but patterns are present. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So uh, I switched over to the black background charts out here for Carvana. One, it's uh, up to up to the second uh, with regard to where it's trading at. But more importantly, um, now I now I understand a little bit better what's going on. First of all, I was talking about A to B equals CD. That would have been a small pattern out here. We're, we're gonna we're gonna neg we're gonna negate that A to B equals CD because what price was really doing was it was pushing into. Now this was a TD nine count top. When I say this, I'm referring back to the trading session of July 20th. That was the bar following bar number nine. So there's your TD9 count top. The resistance level out there, volume out there, by the way, was uh, 46 million shares. As price was pushing up into it on a daily basis, it was 24 million shares. Then it was 18 million shares. So not enough volume to take out that swing point at 57.19. And now price has gotten back inside its, uh, its uh, new profile, new profile that formed today. So you've got a new resistance level, Dan. That's at 55.72. And supports at 47.10 out there. Now, what I also notice on a 30-minute basis out here is it's attempting to form an A to B equals CD to the downside. Attempting because price is not closed below the swing point at 51.12. This is a 30-minute chart we're looking at. The volume on that swing point from 2 o'clock on the 15th did volume of 446,000 shares. The last 30-minute session, when I came in at 11.30, 1.1 million shares pushing, testing and rejecting 51.12. But a close below 51.12 is going to suggest a move to 49.46, maybe 47.92, maybe even 45.95 out there. So the daily chart didn't have the volume to take out the swing point in its TD9 count top. Price is now inside, consolidated with inside a new profile out there. And I would say if you get that confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on a 30-minute basis, we're looking at that move maybe all the way back to 47.10. Remember, the 1 to 1 is at 49.46 and 47.92 for the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. There's nothing really that I see. There's nothing bearish on the weekly or the uh, monthly time frame out there. So it's really the daily and I'll say the 30 minute chart that is in control out there. So I hope that helped you out with regard to Carvana. CVNA is the uh, ticker symbol out there. And thank you very much for the request. The next request coming in from Mike S. And Mike writes in, tell us about the most memorable food moments you had in Japan. Mike in Jakarta. Oh, how about that? Oh, formerly Mike and Sell. Oh, how about that? Okay. Um, well, the so most memorable food moments you had in Japan. I'll tell you one of them. 
because uh, there were many. But I will tell you one that that, that sticks out. And first, though, if you've never been to Japan, this I haven't been back there for about 15 years. I used to go two or three times a year. I had businesses over there. Um, but and I haven't been back for 15 years. And there's been a lot of changes over there. Every country's gone through a lot of changes over the last several years out there. But one of the um, uh, so one of the cities that we went to uh, was Hiroshima. And uh, Hiroshima is known for really three things. They are known for some great sake uh, that we tried out there. Uh, they have one sake that they mill the rice down to 6%. Um, and we tried that, and that was a great sake. That wasn't that, that was a great food option over in Hiroshima. But what we really went there for, they're also known for their oysters. The oyster beds, the amazing thing is that the atomic bomb didn't destroy the oyster beds that were out there. The oyster beds are 500 years old, and so with inside the entire country of Japan, Osaka is really known as the oyster capital. Now, a lot of their oysters are much larger than what you and I might be normally used to, but they are fantastic. What we went over there for, other than obviously to, um, you know, kind of a very, if you have, if you've never been there, it's worthwhile to go, especially why the world is pushing towards war out there. I think if everybody went, maybe they might just simply change their minds. But that wasn't what you asked. So we went over there for the pancake. It's uh, called Okoni, Okonomiyaki. I believe that's it. And uh, luckily, the two days before we went to Hiroshima, we were at a restaurant great restaurant, private sushi bar out there. It turned out that the uh, one of the assistants there uh, grew up in Hiroshima. And so she told us exactly where to go to, which was in the train station. A lot of the great restaurants, believe it or not, are inside the train stations, inside these cities out there. And uh, so we get there, it was four of us, we get there and um, and we go to stand in line. So the interesting thing about lines in Japan, this is very orderly country, very orderly people out there. And you don't want to go out of order. And I'm talking about even jaywalking. Um, but in any event, so we get to, we, we took, the, took the bullet train to Hiroshima. It was about 1130. We were all a little bit hungry. We said, hey, let's go find the uh, pancake uh, place. No, I'm not talking about IHOP pancakes, by the way. You can look it up on the Internet. You'll see, you know, what's, uh, what's with inside this. So we get, we finally get to the area. What happened was there was a guy that came up to us and, and said, can I help you? And he had on a, he had on a vest that was kind of like an information jacket. So we told him what we were after. He took us right over to the place. We get there and there's a line. So no problem. We stand in, uh, it was lying on two sides of the aisle way there. So we, and, and they said it was going to be about a half an hour wait. Then um, there was another guy that came up and they were testing a communication system. So our interpreter said, these guys would like to know if you would be interested in helping them out in that system. We said, well, sure. What does it require? They said, well, you've got to go to a different area. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have somebody stand in line for you so you don't miss your place. So, I said, OK, that's great. We went over and did that. We come back. We switched places in line. The people from the restaurant, they come in. So we still have maybe about 15 minutes, at least a 15 minute wait. We, they come back to us and they take our order while we're in line. So like, that's kind of interesting. Of course, the entire menu is in Japanese, but we knew what we wanted. All four of us ordered the uh, pancake. And the cool thing was, so it was really about a half an hour wait. When we go to sit down at our table, within two minutes, what they bring to us is what we had ordered. A very cool system that they had there, but uh, one of the favorite foods, one of the favorite experiences uh, came out of Hiroshima. And again, it was their oysters, the Okonomiyaki, and they, they did have some really amazing uh, sake over there. So, Mike, uh, that's one of those experiences. You weren't asking about anything specific other than that, but uh, thanks for the uh, question. And I've got many other food experiences that I'll share along the uh, line here over the course of the next uh, week or so. But absolutely a fabulous uh, fabulous trip. The the biggest issue that I'm dealing with is the jet lag. So I don't sleep on airplanes. I mean, you come back from the west to the east, and uh, it it can be a it can be a real bummer. I mean, yesterday I was flat on my back out there. Uh, so hopefully I've got enough sleep, and the head is a little bit less groggy out there. But you'll you'll be the judge of that by listening to me ramble on here. So I don't see any other questions. Let me just make sure here. I don't see any other questions. Um, so then, therefore, what is Stevie going to do? Let me see here. Was there anything? Uh, Dan had a similar experience in Ho Chi Minh. Cool. Uh, at the War Museum. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the uh, going to the going to the war, going to the memorial in Hiroshima. Um, yeah. Ooh. yeah, it's worthwhile. It's really worthwhile 
for people to go uh, see that uh, stuff out there. In any event, uh, let's uh, move on. I don't know what I'm going to move on to, but, uh, oh, I know what I'm going to move on to. I'm going to move on to this. I'm going to switch panels out here. And so one of the things that I noticed is kind of unusual, not unusual, but one of the things that I noticed here is um, is what was going on in the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. And uh, that's the charts that I've got up on my screen right now. RSP is the ETF for the S is the equal weighted ETF for the S and P 500. It has performed much worse than the SPY has, by the way. But the, what really, um, what really uh, uh, drew my attention this morning. Uh, was the fact that it's triggered a road's momentum indicator signal. Now, we've had a gap to the downside, so that's a bearish signal. But what you can see right now, you've got a hammer candle. I don't know what the candle's going to look like at day's end. But if we did get a hammer candle, it makes it difficult. Is it a bearish candle or is it a bullish candle? The point is, maybe we don't get that bullish reversal candle today, but the RSP, which really, like the QQEW, they really tell you the direction of what to expect inside of the, what's going on underneath the covers. Watch the RSP for some type of market turn signal. Steve Rhodes, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den wrote in about the uh, Grand Central Oyster Bar uh, in uh, New York. I was up in New York for a wedding last December, and uh, two of the people that we went to uh, Japan with, uh, we were there with them for the entire trip, uh, but for a good portion of the trip. Um, and we were staying, and we went to this wedding, we were staying at the hotel right across from Grand Central Station. It was like a Saturday afternoon, I believe, Saturday or Sunday, it was Saturday afternoon, and uh, they said, hey, let's go over to Grand Central to get something. Let's go to this uh, oyster bar. Bar, a seafood place, and uh, grab something to eat. Turned out they were closed. 
I don't recall again if it was Saturday or, or Sunday off, but they were closed. Well, these same two people, Steve and Denise, are the ones that uh, we caught up with in uh, Tokyo. Uh, they came in. We got there on a Thursday. They came in on a Saturday. And restaurants in Tokyo, not the smaller ones, but the bigger ones, they close early, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, even on a Saturday. Anyways, they got in late, and uh, I had made a reservation at the Grand Central Oyster Bar at the Tokyo train station. Um one of the trains, yeah, I think it's the Tokyo train station. Yeah, I know it's a Tokyo train station out there. So, John, that's one of your favorite places. We tried to eat there in New York, couldn't get in, but what we did do is we ate there in uh, Tokyo, and it was uh, great, the oysters. Now, what's cool about the uh, oyster bar in Japan is that, of course, they're bringing them in from all over the place, whether it's Kyushu down in the south, uh, whether it was in Hiroshima, or even the oysters up in Hokkaido. Um, I mean, it's just simply, if you're a seafood lover, well, it's a seafood lover's paradise there. So, uh, John, I agree with you uh, that we uh, that uh, that is a good uh, oyster bar to uh, head to. So they've got one in Tokyo. Next time you're over there, go ahead and stop on in. In any event, folks, we're about done with the show here. You've got U.S. equities trading higher. Dow's up 93, S&P 14. U.S. dollar index is down about uh, four ticks right now. Um, I don't expect we're going to see a ton of movement out here uh, until perhaps Wednesday at about 2, 2.30 when uh, a Fed chair comes out with his uh, decision on interest rates out there. But thanks, folks, for uh, joining me, and I'll look forward to being with you again tomorrow. So have a marvelous Monday, and we'll see you on Terrific Tuesday.